Hey guys, I sit here and welcome to Python tutorial number 19. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at converting from integer to string and vice versa. Okay, uh, so I've kind of been uh, not really holding off, but I meant to do this a while ago, but I forgot. It doesn't really matter that I didn't do it a while ago, because it's one of those things you don't really need to know. It's not like fundamental to the language, but it's really quite handy to know. It's the idea. But anyway, uh, let's go ahead and op open up the uh, idle. So, um, really simply, I'm just gonna, this is gonna be like three or four minutes maybe. Um, remember how we had that issue of we couldn't do something like 5 plus 5, because it would try and do the mathematical operation. Uh, well, the way we could do this is, say we want to do, do the mathematical operation, but we had um, we had let's say var one equals input. Um, so the first value the user input is five, but then we have another one and five. Oh crap! Uh, okay, var two equals input. Oops. Uh, l let me just look at var1. Okay, so there we can see var1 is a string because we used raw input, but for some reason we used input for the second one, so if we look at var2, it's a number. And so, um, let's say for the in the first instance, we wanted to just concatenate the two um, values together. If we tried to do this, thinking that both of these were strings, whoops, var1 plus var2, it wouldn't work, because one had a string in it and one had, had an int. So what we need to do to convert a value from a string to an integer, or vice versa, is use these one of these two functions. Uh, now, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh well, I'm sure it wasn't that important. But anyway, uh, so to convert a value, say we'll start off with uh, just literal values and then we'll look at using it with variables. Uh, to convert something to an integer, use the int function, okay? Uh, so I could have the string 5, and if I ru put it into the int function, it returns it as an integer. If I have a string, uh, if I want to change something to a string, sorry, and I pass it a number 5, you can see it comes out as uh, a string. Now you can't pass, you can only pass int numbers, obviously you can't pass it something like hello, because uh, hello isn't a number, obviously. So you can only pass int numbers, but you can pass string pretty much every anything. Uh, so, well, actually, well, yeah, you can pass it anything, you could pass it a string even, there's no point in passing it a string though, because it's already a string, so. But yeah, so anyway, back to this example. Uh, I want them both to be, uh, let's say, strings, because I want to concatenate them uh, side by side. So just to be sure, I'll say var1 equals string var1, and var2 equals string var2, because at the moment I don't know which whether either of them is a, a string or an integer or what, so I'll just run it on both of them to be sure. Imagine that's the case. And then, now I can do print var1 plus var2. And there we go, we get 5, 5, side by side. Uh, and we could do the same if we went back to where we just got the input, we could say var1 equals int var1. Okay, now var2 equals int var2. Uh, and now we could say print var1 plus var2, and we get 10, because that would do the mathematical operation. Okay. Um, actually, I might as well take this tutorial to introduce a sort of new type. Um, it's not really new, but uh, it's kind of important to understand. Uh, that is the... Well, I don't know if... I guess it's a type, but it's a... Uh, I don't actually know the form... Or actually, the form name might be representation, okay? But the function used to convert to a... Let's say it's representation is re reaper, like that, okay? Uh, now, what reaper does is... Um, 
it changes the value to what it looks like in Python. So, say you have when you print um, var1, or let's uh, let's change var1 to a string again, just because that's the easiest way to see it in action. Var1. Okay. So when you print var1, you get five. But what uh, it doesn't show you is the quotes around, which denote in Python's mind it's a string, because uh, the print uh, statement formats it so it takes out all those quotes so it doesn't look so stupid and ridiculous okay uh, and it takes out all the backslashes you know before any quotes which have to be escaped and all that stuff okay so uh, that's basically what the print statement does but uh, if we print and then use the reaper function on var1 we'll see all that formatting comes back okay so say we had let's just redefine var1 completely we'll say Hello backward slash n walls. Now I'm not sure if this will work, but let's give it a go. Uh, if we do Reaper again, var1. And you can see there, it did work as I expected. Rather than, uh, let's just print var1 by itself so we can compare. Rather than put in that carriage return like we marked it should do, Reaper uh, actually shows how the value is stored in Python. And it's got those quotes as well. Okay. Um, so Reaper is actually, it can come in handy sometimes. Now, um, we can also use the Reaper conversion type in string formatting, so we could have something like uh, R, and then we just pass it var1, let's say, oops, percent var1, and there we can see it's done that, whereas if we just said print and then with a string and passed it var1, we would get it like that, okay? So there we go, that's converting from types and also Reaper as well. Okay, so that's it for now, guys, over now.